What I'm going to do is show you how to create a simple interactive activity using Adobe Illustrator to create an SVG file and from the SVG file we will then uh, add some JavaScript, we'll add some CSS and make it interactive and then you can use that HTML that we've created inside your course content. What the actual activity will do is it will come up with some text that says click on the triangle, it will have uh, three images and these are all vector based images so as we resize the content in our website it will resize which is exactly what you want it to do when it's being displayed on a mobile device. Then what we'll do is we'll add some click events that will allow the, a student or a user to click on an object and it will show some type of response. In this case if they click on the square and the circle it will say try again, if they click on the triangle it will say correct. And that's how the extent of the interactive activity that we will do. So let's get in and do this. We're going to open Adobe Illustrator and for this we're going to add three objects. First of all we will add a rectangle. Place that on the document. Doesn't really matter what size it is because when we export this it's going to automatically scale. We might just change the colour though to a nice green. There we go. So we have our square. We also have a circle and we're also going to add a triangle using the polygon tool. So let's just add our polygon and won't worry about the size yet. But what we need to do with that is go over to uh, appearance. Sorry, not appearance. In there, it's actually in transform. And it tells us here how many sides the polygon is going to have. We'll drop that back down to three to give us a triangle. And then we will move that back down. So we now have our three shapes, a square, circle and a triangle. We will save that. Let's add some text. And the text just has to say, click on the triangle. The objective of this is that a student or user, we might just center that while we're going, needs to choose an object, click on it, and then we will show them whether they're correct or incorrect. And we're creating this, remember, in Adobe Illustrator, so it'll all be vector-based. Let's go and add another bit of text. And this one is just to say, try again. So if they do get it wrong, we will display the words try again. If they do get it correct, we will just say correct. Nice and simple. Again, we'll just center those on the page so they look a bit neater and save that. So we've got all of our objects ready on the screen. Uh, we're going to export them as an SVG file that can be then used in HTML where we add our JavaScript before that though. We're going to name a few things just to make it easier for us. So if we go to layers and have a look at our layers there. You can see we've got the rectangle. So I'm going to type in ACT for activity and rectangle and we'll also name the circle. So I'll put in C-A-R-C-L-E for circle. We'll also name our triangle. There we go. We're also going to name correct. So the correct text will have its own layer name and also try again will have its own layer name as well. I've just put ACT dash in front so that the IDs don't clash with IDs that you may have for other HTML components on your page when we export. Okay, the last thing we need to do, and this is just because Adobe Illustrator when you export SVG, uh, it can sometimes add in a, a whole collection of extra information that we don't need when it's trying to get the text to space correctly. So what we can do, we go to, the, to our text and do this for each one of them. Go to character, uh, to the extra information and where it says set the kerning, just in here, we just need to make sure that it says zero, not auto. So if it's zero, then we've done the right thing. So just check those other ones again. So make sure it says zero, which is correct. And over here, go to the extra information, 
go to kerning and set that to zero and we're all correct. I'll show you what happens if you don't do that in a moment. Right, we're ready to go. It's time to export. So file, export, export as. Scroll down in the format to SVG and choose export. You may want to rename that if you need to. We just choose export. We can use internal, inline or presentation attributes. We're going to go with presentation attributes at the moment. That just means that things like color, uh, borders, other information will all be part of the HTML rather than a separate CSS file. Okay, SVG, link, layer names, all of that stays the same. We don't need to change anything. And then we can just go show code. And you can see there, this is the code that creates that Adobe Illustrator file or the HTML code. Let's copy that and don't panic about it yet. We're going to go, we're going to go into an editor and save the HTML. So I'm just going to paste it into Sublime Text. We'll call this uh, demo1.html and save that. Here we go and I'm just going to right click and prettify the code just so it's easier for you to see or read and have a look at what the code looks like. So it's relatively simple. I'll say relatively. Let's just space it out a bit more so you can see more detail. Again, you do need to learn a bit of HTML to be able to do this type of thing. But let's have a look. We have our SVG. We have a rectangle. We have a circle. Notice the circle is called ACT-Circle, which is correct. We have a polygon called ACT triangle. I mustn't have named the layer for the rectangle for some reason, but that's okay. We can fix that. Uh, the text, or the first bit of text that's in here uh, is called click on the triangle. So that's just some text information. Then we have our text try again. So it's got an ID of ACT try again. And ACT correct is the ID that matches our correct text. Let's preview it. So I'll save that and we'll view that in the browser. Okay, we're in our browser now. And you can see in the browser we have exactly the same as what we have if we jump back to Illustrator. I'll just cancel that. You can see we've got click on the triangle, we've got our shapes. Try again, correct. Jump back to our preview and you can see we have the square, circle, triangle. We click on the triangle and the words try again. We also should have correct in there as well. Did I enter that in the wrong spot? I did. There we go. Okay, so try again and correct are still in there. To make this an interactive activity, we have to do two things. One is we need to hide a few things and then two, we need to add some JavaScript using an on click function to show them again. So let's hide a few things. So first of all, we need to hide the try again and we need to hide the correct. So to do that, we go into text and beside our try again writing, because we want to hide that so that when they click on one of the objects, we can show try again or show correct, depending on whether they're correct or incorrect. So to do that, we go style equals display colon none. And that's adding a style that will hide the words try again. And let's add one to the words correct as well. So down here we go, style equals display colon none. If we save that and refresh it, you can see they've both disappeared now. So we're nearly ready now so that when they click on one of these objects, it will either hide or show uh, the information, whether it's correct or incorrect. Let's add an on click to each of our shapes. So we go on click equals double quotes and we now need to do some JavaScript or add in some JavaScript. The JavaScript we're going to use is document dot get element by ID and when we say get element by ID we're talking about these ID equals here. So we're going to say if they click on the rectangle we are going to show the try again bit of writing. So document get element by ID and in single quotes we'll put in try again. So we'll find the writing try again and then all we need to do for this is add style dot display 
So we're changing the style and the style uh, attribute we're changing is display. We're going to say equals block. There we go. So what should happen now is when they click on the rectangle just there or the rectangle here, it will go and find the element by ID activity try again, which is activity try again, and it will set the style for displaying it to block instead of display none and it will then show it. So let's just test that. Save and refresh. If I now click on the square, the words try again appear. So I'll just show you again. If I go up to the square, click on it, try again appears. So that bit's exactly what we wanted. So let's copy uh, all of the on click and add that to the circle and to the polygon. So that's to our triangle. The difference with triangle though is instead of try again, we want to show correct. So we now have, if you click on the rectangle, if you click on the circle, it says try again. If you click on the polygon, it shows correct. Let's give it a go. So if we click on the square, it shows try again. If we click on the circle, it says try again. If we click on the triangle, it says correct. What it's not doing though is hiding the word try again or correct if we click on the other ones again. So we need to do the opposite now. So let's just go and add another part to our on click. So we've got document get on by ID, try again display equals block. Now we're going to add document by ID and we're going to say if they click on the square, we also want to hide the ACT correct ID. So let's do that. So ACT correct display and instead of block it will be none which means hide. So we're going to hide that one. What I'm going to do now is just grab that bit of code and add it to each one. So you can see here how you do need to know a bit of code and you will definitely get into learning how that code works as you go. So we're right for circle. We want to hide correct and we want to hide try again. So let's change that to try again. Save that and refresh in our browser. So if we click on the square, it says try again. If we click on the circle, it says try again. If we click on the triangle, it says correct. If I click now on the circle, it should say try again. Triangle correct. Square, try again. So you can see it's jumping between the two now. So we've turned our uh, little activity that was in Illustrator into a very basic interactive component, which you can basically just grab all of that HTML and drop that inside your educational content and that activity will work in the browser. One thing I think you should add before I finish up and that is that when they move their mouse over shapes they should change to a hand. So let's just add that. So to add the cursor we just need to add a style to the rectangle, the circle and the polygon that says when they move the mouse over the object it shows the little hand so they know it's something they can click on. So to do that we just go style equals and we put in cursor colon pointer semicolon. We will grab that and copy that across all of them. And select save. Let's refresh it. So now when we move the cursor over each shape it turns into a hand so they know it's something they can click on. Now they can click on each one and it shows them correct. Try again or correct. And that's how you add a Adobe Illustrator vector image uh, into HTML or convert it to HTML in SVG and then add some interactivity using JavaScript. It's a very simple example but obviously you can make that into a much more uh, interesting and more educationally useful activity. If you'd like to know more about that put some comments in there for me because I'm really keen to see what you think of this and whether it's useful to you and obviously if you have some ideas that you'd like to try let me know and we can have a look at those as well and see what we can do and how far we can push this type of interactivity uh, inside HTML in your education content. If you're looking for courses on how to do this as well there will be a link down the bottom feel free to jump in and have a look at those courses which will teach you in more detail uh, how to do this type of interactive activity in HTML uh, starting with Adobe Illustrator and how to use uh, more advanced JavaScript and certainly make things a lot more interactive for your students including animation as well.